Hello, Trevor. Hi, Lonnie. How are you doing? Great, thanks. How are you? Good. I'm excellent, thank you. I'm excellent. Good. I'm happy to hear that. So today we're back with our uh, discussion, but this time we're featuring uh, uh, Mirtha Partners. So very interesting topic because it's very special to us. Um, so let's get started. Okay. Well, today we've got four guests, two from North America and uh, two from Europe. So that should be interesting in itself. And uh, we've tried working with many groups in, in terms of dealers and so on. We view, in, initially we'd have a sole distributor for a country. Uh, then we'd look to agents and so on. We tried working with uh, filtration experts. We tried working with pool guilds. We tried all sorts of things. Not with great success, but we've had some good success with people. And I yeah. think what you find in life is you have to find a good partner. I'm lucky I've been when, with one for 40 odd years. So, you know, I, I've got a good partner. And now we've got many good partners in our business. So <clears throat> they come from a lot, uh, a lot of different backgrounds. But one thing uh, in common is they're very successful at what they do. And yeah. that makes us successful at what we do. Yeah, so, it's the perfect pair. Like you said, um, great relationships with our partners and us being able to rely on them and have those relationships. It really is a testament to uh, a lot of the, the good work that we do here at Mirtha. So with that being said, we'll dive into our first guest um, who is on your side of the pond um, in the sense that we have Joe Cerrone from RDC. And hi, Joe, welcome. Good morning, thank you. Well, so, it's not good morning over there. Where... No, it's it's afternoon for me. <laughs> but... <laughs> well, we, we start today with the, the first pool that we built in the USA with, with Joe. And it was that one in the top left-hand corner. It was a 25 meter by 25 yard pool that uh, Joe's team built in uh, in Fort Lord uh, sorry in uh, Coral Springs yeah. and uh, this came from a relationship that we had with the swim coach or, or he was a European swim coach Michael Loberg uh, and uh, he introduced us to this project Joe built it he went back later and renovated the 50 meter pool he went back later and renovated the diving pool he then went back again and built this new teaching pool at the bottom right. And then he went back again and completely redid the circulation of the 50 and re, re, uh, rejigged it all over again. Uh, Joe, this was a great product for us. Would you like to talk about it? Certainly. So, you know, we're talking about partners, but RDC comes at, uh, at a partner with Mirtha from probably a different angle than <clears throat> you're used to is, is RDC is a is a uh, design build general contractor. So we take on the entire project. We don't just go after the pool, but we go after the entire project. So, um, you know, this was the first pool was in 95 and it was an Olympic training site for the uh, Latin American teams. And so we took the entire project. We were the design build contractor. So we did the earthwork, the civil, you know, we did we did the bathroom, we did the filtration, we did everything. Um, yeah. So our history with Mirtha is the longest in the United States, but it's also probably the most different. Um, yeah. and, Lonnie, and we totally enjoy that relationship. Lonnie, next slide, because Lonnie, the next one, because this is where you came from, isn't it, Joe? You you do parks, you do parks, tennis uh, thing. Baseball, diamonds, the whole lot. The whole lot, yeah. A lot of our clients are municipal. Um, you know, so this was one of our projects. It's the Carl Springs Tennis Center. And we were building this uh, facility. We finished it. And then the city came out, the city of Carl Springs, and advertised the RFP for the design build of the 25 by 25 that we talked about. So, um, and then, you know, through the years, we became a... Uh, a uh, commercial pool contractor out of necessity. Um, so, you know, we always built the Mirtha pool ourselves, but now we do the plumbing, uh, you know, the concrete works around it. We do everything. 
Well, so that's really interesting. That. And this project, I mean, this one fascinated me when this was at the very early stages of our relationship. But tell us a little bit about uh, Jacob's Aquatic Center, where it is and so on. Um, Jacob's Aquatics is in the Florida Keys. And if you're unfamiliar with it, depending on where you are, the Florida Keys are a series of islands uh, on the southern end of Florida that lead to Key West, which is the southernmost point in the United States. So this, these are on islands that are connected through bridges. Um, it, it, early on, when we did a project, we would invite the community and invite anybody to you know, showcase the project and, and the Upper Keys Community Pool Group came to uh, our Coral Springs grand opening and they were, you know, intrigued by it. And um, they finally ended up with a donor um, who funded the entire project. Um, so they were in business from day, like day two. They had a project, they had the money, and they ended up negotiating the land with uh, Monroe County. Um, you know, if you could, if I could pan this photograph, you know, a uh, hundred yards away is the Atlantic Ocean. Um, and when we dug the pool, it wasn't a dig. It was more of a, uh, a mining excavation because it's solid <laughs> coral um, and it was fissured. So they would, they cut the coral and they took it out and they used it and they sold it for, uh, you know, home furnishings, tile patterns, walls and so we ended up with a free dig, but the, the dewatering was, you know, incredible. Um, we couldn't just dump the water into the Atlantic Ocean back again. We had to create uh, deep injection wells and settling ponds. Um, but it's really, it's a beautiful project. It's a 25 meter by 25 yard with a dive well. There's a learn to swim pool that ends up being the, you know, the upper keys uh you know, bar hangout. I think they even have liquor there sometimes on the weekends. Uh, and then the resort pool, which was uh, probably the first um, Florida rollout gutter that Mirtha created just for RDC and the, and the Florida market. So yeah. it was really a fun project. And it wasn't long after this, right, that uh, RDC then became kind of the go-to for all of the, any type of pool, right, in, in Florida. Yes. So, you know, this is another great project that we did for the city of Miami. And we had the, uh, the opportunity to, um, to retain Romero Brito, who is a world renowned uh, artist. And this is all his artwork that you see here. Amazing. He, he touched every piece in the park. He was like so gracious with his time and his, his staff. Um, he even came to the grand opening and signed posters we had posters made of it and gave them out to everybody and he signed them and you know it was really it was just a great project for everybody yeah you, you remind me joe when you you talk about uh, the the early projects how you always used to have a grand opening that led to more projects and yes i think many of our distributors do that but a lot also have not been taught how valuable it is to get the next project and get another one. So oh, clearly. You did um, the good You know, the, there's a couple of keys to this, and that is sell the owner and then sell the owner again and continue to sell the owner. Um, and I so. think you taught us that. Uh, it, okay. It's a very important part that uh, we know the owner is in charge. If you get right. the owner, you've got the project. You've got the project. And the one that you just passed over, that was the University of Miami. Um, yeah. That's another beautiful project that we're very proud of. Yeah. So. And I know we can, Joe, we have so many pools with RDC that we can talk, I think, uh, an entire session on itself. Yeah. But more particularly, I want to focus today on our more of that relationship that we've kind of garnered over the years and then talk a little bit about how it's played such an important role. Like Trevor was mentioning, like grand openings is leading to new projects, but also um, some personal relationships. Uh, so, well, just, so, yeah, I mean, listen, what, I've traveled all over the world with Trevor, Roberto, and Giorgio, and so many of the other distributors, uh, builders that, you know, I mean, I can Trevor up and he can answer a question. I'm in a meeting, you know, what's this regulation? Or, you know, we were working on a pool in, um, 
in the, the Caribbean and Trevor was right there with an answer, you know, for me in a meeting and, you know, they were all impressed. Um, yeah. They didn't know that there was a guy that I was asking you know, the question to. Um, yeah. So, yeah, these relationships are, you know, you don't deal with somebody for 27 years and not, you know, there's, there's not a lot behind that relationship. Yeah. Um, Please tell us the background of how we ended up with the Porsche Tower project. You know, I always say it's relationships are the key, but I think that in this case, we actually owe part of it to your daughter. Yes. Um, you know, she had a hand in it. She met somebody who knew somebody that, you know, oh, listen, that's, you know, that's, you should talk to my father. And, and then, you know, there we are at a meeting. And then, you know, there were so many other relationships that tied us into it. You know, a friend of mine knew the developer and, you know, he interjects. So he was getting it from all sides that, you know, this was the only way to go was with, with, you know, Mirtha and RDC. Um, yeah. And, the, you know, the really fun part for me was when when he flew over, um, he, he had his personal Gulfstream fly the team over to Italy. And, you know, we had a mock up there. And uh, I won't tell him about Trevor and Roberto in their Speedos in the pool, but um, <laughs> but but he probably you know, part of the cell. You never know. <laughs> I think we had to overcome that part of the cell. <laughs> but he, he did, you know, I was standing next to him and I don't think he met it, meant anybody to hear him, but he goes, holy shit, somebody actually was able to build my dream. And it was this Amazing. pool on a balcony. Um, yeah. So that was kind of really, a you know, kind of a great moment for me to, to hear. How many, how many of those did we do, Joe? There were 116 balcony pools and then the balance. So it's 120 total. There was spas, common area spas, the main pool, uh, of course, the 116 balcony pools. And then there were two penthouse pools. Um, wow. Yeah. That led, uh, led it, to uh, many more pools in Southern Florida. As well, well, what it did was it, you know, the Porsche Towers was, you know, was the talk of the, you know, really of the development world because it was using this iconic brand, you know, Porsche design, and that they had a, they had an elevator system that was delivering cars to your unit. So your car was parked in your garage that was really next to your living room. Uh, so it was an iconic build, and then we were associated with it. So it really just kind of skyrocketed Mirtha and RDC into the, you know, the elevated pool market. Yeah, especially the, the SLS came after that, and that's the project SLS that we came also, after that, correct. Yeah. Um, you know, which is a you know big luxury brand hotel, and you're looking at uh, Privé, which is an island uh, community in you know in Miami, and then you know the Bristol, and we're in uh, Orlando, we're in Disney at the Swan right now. Yeah, the Muse also another the high rises and yeah the Muse yeah. Yep. So. Well, so, uh, I just want to thank you sincerely for all that you've done for us. And, and, uh, and thank you to your daughter. Of course, we have to thank her. <laughs> to continue to thank her. I will. <laughs> um, but really, it's, it goes two ways. You know, the relationships are a two-way street. So it's a it's a, a give and a get in it both ways. So you guys have been great to me. And, you know, Mirtha gives me, or RDC, a um, kind of like a blue a blue ocean where you know, everybody can build a concrete pool, right? I mean, you know, anybody can build a concrete pool all over the world, but how many Mirtha pool builders are there and how many Mirtha pool builders are you competing against on any given project? So, you know, if, if I can sell the owner on the Mirtha pool, again, he's going to want, you know, backup, but there's only, you know, they only get three bids. They don't get 20 as if they were, yeah. you know, a concrete pool. So, you know, Very people good. who are considering being a dealer or a distributor of Martha should really consider, you know, the business benefits of that alone. It's Excellent. a lockable specification. Very perfectly said, Joe. Thank you. Thank you for that. And for the audience, I'm sure that uh, if you've got some further questions for Joe, he's always available to answer and you can look uh, their website up, which is outstanding uh, on the yeah. internet, RDC Construction Inc. RDC, rdcdesignbuild.com. Okay, well done.
<laughs> Thank you, Joe. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Good to see you, Trevor. Thank you, Joe. Thanks. Okay, so moving steadily along, we go to our next guest, who is now on my side of the pond, um, uh, our representative in Poland, so Mateusz Stromski. And in this photo, he's pictured here to the right. And on the left, we have uh, Simone Negri, who's export manager. Um, this is an uh, interesting situation because Matthias originally started with Mirtha uh, with a dealer company and kind of created, not created, we moved into this role where he's now the face of Mirtha uh, local to Poland um, and that liaison, that person on site. Um, so I'll bring him into the conversation to join us, Trevor. Hi, Hi Hello to everyone. Good afternoon. And, Thanks for joining. I'd just like to make the point, uh, Lani, that we have many uh, sort of representatives all over the place that started in some other position. I think of Matt Rosica of uh, now of CEM, but you know, he used yeah. to work for our distributor in uh, Canada as a pool installer. Then went yeah. on and started setting up a company called, called the Pool Company in North America, and now works with one of our best and biggest distributors, uh, CEM. In, yeah. Uh, Utah. So, I mean, the background of working with a, a Mertha family distributor is very important teaching tool in order to move into any of these types of jobs. So, Mateus obviously had a really good background because he's doing a really good job for us. Yeah. And this was... Uh one of the first major projects in uh, Poland, Termi Uniów. I'm sorry, Matthias, if I'm butchering that, that pronunciation, but can you tell us a little bit about this project? Like, where did the lead come from? Or how, how was the team able to secure this one? Because this was kind of that, the beginning of, I think, Poland taking off, no? Yeah, thank you very much indeed for a, a very warm uh, um, introduction. Uh, yeah, first of all, I came across uh, Mirka Pools a couple of years ago, I think early 2017. And uh, indeed, I started to work uh, through for the, the local distributor. And now I became uh, a local uh, for Mirka Pools here in Central Europe, particularly here in Poland. Um, this uh, project is, uh, is a significant project, I may say, because uh, we uh, broke uh, uh, first significant barrier we met in front of us because, uh, as you know, uh, Poland and Central Europe is uh, a difficult market, uh, growing up, but difficult market with a uh, huge knowledge about swimming pools and uh, in particular a uh, huge role is being played by uh, the competitors uh, those who are uh, selling uh, welded stainless steel pools. So we have been introduced to this project from the very beginning phase. It is a municipal project of Terme Unieju, as you correctly said. Uh, it's located also very significantly because literally it's in the very heart of Poland. It's on the meeting point between two main highways in Poland. Um, it's very famous, one of the most famous and well-known uh, thermal facility uh, with a thermal source itself. And uh, yeah, and we, we, we um, cooperated uh, on the design with the architectural studio uh, during the designing phase, the construction design, then executive design. Uh, so we were basically supporting them, all of our team. Um, being involved in this very project and uh, yeah and we we were waiting for the construction tender the general contractor uh, after the conclusion of the tender has been chosen and uh, we um, successfully in that time our distributor uh, successfully uh, was um, awarded um, um, and uh, they signed a, a contract with the general contractor a huge company uh, and they build it it's uh, as you see, it's a very multifunctional pool. Um, yeah. It's, it's a kind of cool, I mean, uh, it's really a nice one. No, it is very beautiful. And just for our uh, guests in North America, the, the market in Europe, especially Northern Europe, is very strong in welded stainless steel pools. Just naked welded steel. 
uh, very unusual to see in uh, North America unless it's in a high-rise situation, but very common in Europe and a very uh, tough competitor for Merta. So uh, getting a job like this is very important for everyone else as well as Poland, uh, all yeah. the other countries in the area. So well done. Yeah, yeah and I, uh, Matthias, just to continue, I know we mentioned... Uh, that Poland is a very fast growing market. I know this year you guys have a great number of projects ongoing. Can you touch a bit about uh, your role as kind of you being the present local character? Do you Would you say that that is a big help in these acquiring these projects and having that interface, that more face-to-face -face interface? Uh, yes, thank you very much for this um, um, point. I think it's important in almost every market to be uh, stick to the um, local reality. To yeah. know the habits, uh, to know the market itself, to know the background about the, the competition, the, the environment of uh, where we are, and uh, yes, I think it's important. I'm, I, I'm at the moment a, a sort of bridge yeah, between the, the headquarter in Italy that uh, supports me so much on the daily basis. Uh, from the technical point of view, also up to the commercial support, uh, fully support. And I transfer, I used to transfer this very support to the, um, to the final customer, being sometimes at the first line, sometimes at the second line, depends project by project. Uh, but I think it's important, it's important to know the language that is, uh, um, that is a different one, yeah. uh, to know also the, the people's expectation. I mean, the clients, um, the, the municipal rules of the public tenders, they are most uh, likely wanted by pool, pool provider uh, and also the, the private projects. So yeah. keeping everything together, I think being local, it's a, it's a great advantage. And in this certain moment, it is becoming to be a must. Yeah, and I think I want to take this opportunity just to mention that Matthias, uh, Poland is not quite a subsidiary as yet. I know you have a you guys are right now a small team, um, but this is a perfect way, Trevor. Like you know, Mirtha USA, for example, is a, a grand subsidiary that has a, a, a huge workflow. But then there, the, all, all of our other subsidiaries and smaller offices, for example, Haller in Brazil and the, the small team in Australia, uh, India, who's also growing that team very big, but they play such an important role. Uh, Mirtha France is also quite big. Um, big offices and big businesses, but to that scale, the testament to that on-site person, really, it really is important. And all, all started with one person. He then grew, it, grew the local organization and grew the business. Yeah. No, so and we have, yeah, we spoke a, a few weeks ago with Patrick and his team in Switzerland, and really he was again stressing that he has the support from HQ and Patrick is a team in Switzerland, but how important it is that he is there in person and he's be, he's able to kind of communicate with uh, locally and really be there. So, yeah, I think uh, this uh, COVID situation has given the opportunity to communicate more with the, with the people out there, but many are not taking advantage of that, and that goes year round. People not taking advantage of the wonderful marketing support. That we yeah. Have. And the technical support that's available to anyone, anytime. So, uh, yeah. yeah, thank you very much, Matthias. That was a good point. Thank you, Matthias, for joining us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. Okay, so moving along, we have back, we head back to the US, Trevor. Um, for our next guest, Doug Roberts of DWR Construction, who we have a very long long-standing history with as well and now I'll, I'll bring doug into the conversation hello Hi, trevor doug. and bonnie how are you great you? thank you and you oh it's morning time here i'm great you're great you've got your coffee oh yeah third one yeah <laughs> i have to tell people that doug is a proud republican but let's not hold that against him <laughs> well what was a proud was a proud Republican. <laughs> uh, Good one, Doug. Yeah. Okay. So, so we, we first started with Doug Lani um, way, way back when the US women decided to go to Long Beach uh, for their Olympic trials. This was the for the Athens Olympics. And um, 
Doug was introduced to us by a local uh, representative and had never done a pool before, never been involved in the industry and built these two magnificent pools yeah. on a park in Long Beach. And uh, as I said, that's now become the standard for US swimming trials. Yeah. Uh, it's just unbelievable. So Noah's, with also some uh, record setting build times, Noah, if I understand correctly, I think the well, first story I heard when I started in Mirtha was the 2016 trials being built in uh, an unreal amount of time. Yeah, no, it's just set record for building pools left, right, and center. It also led to selling secondhand pools. So, you know, this started the business of using a pool for one event and then selling it on to a permanent home afterwards. So uh, this was a very important uh, uh, experience that we had there. Um, yeah. And... Uh this next this next project, uh, Doug, do you want to tell us a little bit about this one? Yeah, this was the, I believe you've got the 50 meter from, is this Carmel, Trevor? Is this up in, I, I got to remember which one it is. But you've got There's the so one. many that you've, you've lost, you've lost yeah, count. Exactly. Okay, we, we understand. Yeah. <laughs> this was the classic uh, that was made up from the uh, trial, the tri uh, world championship short course pool and uh, you pieced the whole thing together for that is it carmel high school yeah Car well carmel and then uh yeah that we redid a lot of the panels trevor yeah. and we turned around and really worked with the local people on this to make that pool exactly what they needed and this was Doug, like the first into like the concrete world of, of pools in California, no? Like this was kind of that introduction, would you say? I'm sorry, Ronnie, say one more time. That this pool kind of got us into, uh, to break away from the standard California Bay, building multiple high school competition pools, usually all in concrete. But this was kind of one of the first ones that really, would you say kind of took you, and introduced you into that, to that world for them to choose Martha then absolutely uh, as we all know california is a very extremely uh, close-knit very very um if you will concrete friendly only environment and this caught everybody by surprise and and i think when we built it got it up and operating the more people that came up and observed and really saw what Merthyr pools were about understood the quality the longevity and the simple really is the simple maintenance of it it's the easy the easy floor to clean the easy wall to clean the tile the gutters these all really impressed the people at carmel high school and you know in turning around with it we look back on it and it's it's been a solid pool it's been uh it's just been a real workforce for them up there in uh, carmel and um it's just uh no regrets whatsoever there just a fantastic project uh, in a sleepy uh, you know uh, basically a seaside town so you didn't get many um simple jobs <laughs> doug when i look at some of the work that you've done like uh, this next one i mean this was a classic building alongside a gymnasium wasn't it and uh tremendous excavation costs and so on yeah i mean there's just so many different projects out here that we've done trevor with the earthquake codes and permitting processes and and all sorts of different ones like the pool that you have up there i think that's on the i think it was the 10th or 12th floor 12th floor in, yeah yep in santa monica and that is a um extremely neat very very high high rent if you will the penthouse that sits below that pool i can't remember it was a very very famous producer but uh that was running about forty thousand dollars a month to rent that that pool is sitting on a uh, basically an isolation vibration system so no absolutely no noise is transmitted from people playing and frolicking in that pool transferred down below because they knew that 
if they had any noise like they previously did, that this whole thing was shot. And I yeah. tell you what, the day that we finally put people in and they splashed around and made noise was really, uh, that was quite a tremendous day in the end of it because it was all based on uh, isolation, dampers and vibration foam and all that. And uh, to this day, it's been, again, a fantastic install, no issues. Perfect. And then this one, this is the um, montage in Beverly Hills. So uh, anyone who's going to California and wants a hotel to stay in, this is the place to stay. Um, I think it's the six star, isn't it, Doug? Yeah, they got, they're close to six star, but yeah, tremendous hotel. Just and this was the pool on the roof, but you also had spa pools in this hotel as well, didn't you, Doug? I think there was five or six spas in it. We did the fountains. We did the open water uh, waterway outside in the little park that uh, they donated. This was a, I think there was seven bodies of water here, Trevor, is what we finally ended up with. Wow. And uh, what sounds strange now, or what I find strange, is that you've done all these projects, but, you know, in the beginning, you were a sort of small town builder. Right, and uh, I would have thought it would be very difficult for you to switch to this unless initially you had income coming from your own business. Would you say that's correct? Yeah, we were a general contractor and we do a lot of um, United States government, uh, you know, basically defense intelligence work within our, our company and that's kind of where we met Trevor when we were working on a local uh, military base that was pretty close to our office. I remember. That. And when you first got us and you, you brought us over and somehow I agreed to do those Long Beach Olympic trial pools. And then we finally looked at what we were really doing and went, oh my God, did we really sign up for this? <laughs> and I well, mean, it was, you know, look at us now. We have yeah, no small to Mosa. <laughs> but yeah, and you know, along over the past 17 or 18 years, Trevor, it's been, Mirtha has grown in the U.S. It, it has done a great job of market share. Um, there's hardly anything that we don't touch. I mean, we're nationwide now. Um, we continue to continually, uh, updating our resume with different projects, but uh, we also, there's a, a tremendous need for, uh, when you're a nationwide company, the, the right people and the right uh, makeup, if you will, of our scholars. And yeah. it, does, it does help to have a, a kind of a base that is, you know, both uh, con general construction and MRTA. You know, it's a hands-on, so it has been working. Well. Doug, I think this is the perfect transition now for us to talk a little bit about some challenging projects um, <laughs> that you've you've really like managed to kind of uh, master. For example, this was a, a pop-up construction, um, and you guys built this pool in some six days, no, just a few days. This well, well yeah. Not. yeah, this is out on uh, this is out on Times Square. We actually came in at, uh, oh, I think it was around 6, 6 a.m. We started with it, and we had to be done for the next morning. It was wow. actually overnight. And um, we had the synchronized swimming, the Olympic uh, synchronized swimmers. This was actually Epson printers from Japan actually put this on. It was really a fantastic event. And, of course, after it was all built, and, and done all that using all this different technology it had to be taken down in like three hours they had to be off of times square so a lot of requirements a lot of permitting a lot of uh, oh my god yeah, yeah but in the end it did a this did them a wonderful job and uh, they were extremely happy with it well it certainly uh, if we've got a problem anywhere in the uh, usa we know that uh, we can call Doug and he can come with his team and help us sort it out. He's, uh, he's always been there for us and uh, I'm sure always will be. Uh, listen, Doug, thank you very much indeed for, for being part of this. 
um, problem. And uh, Sam, Sam, as I said to Joe, if anyone uh, wants to ask them, Doug, some questions, if they've got a challenge in install, Doug has <laughs> been there, done that, and he's got the T-shirt, and he's probably found it by now. <laughs> Doug, thank you for joining us. Hey, listen, Trevor, Flani, thank you both very much, and uh, we look forward to the additional projects we all have on our books now. Of course. <laughs> Of course. Okay, coming back to this side of the world, we have last but certainly not least, Lars Warm of Dish Denmark. Hi, Lars. Hi, thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, we don't have morning here, we have late afternoon. So <laughs> it's, it's already dark. We are on the 55th latitude up here, so it's on the same level as New Finland, actually. I talk, about, I talk about Lars and his company um, who were so disappointed with the way swimming facilities were being built in Denmark that he went off and he built his own. I mean, is that a true story, Lars? Because I'm it, 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 no, no, I was actually, I was selected the president of a, of a mid-sized club in Denmark, 1,500 members. And we got a, we got a trainer who wanted a 50 meter and I thought this was far too expensive. So we need to find a different way of doing it. Denmark is a very socialistic country. We have a world record in taxing. So uh, nobody built uh, bigger swimming pools out of private money. It's all built by the government or the municipals. So um, it's very expensive in Denmark and we try to find another way of doing it. Um, I actually come from yeah, originally from agriculture. I'm educated as an agricultural specialist. So this has nothing to do with swimming. <laughs> um, I've spent uh, quite a number of years in uh, software CRM system, customer relationship management. And I mention it because this is actually part of the, I think part of the success we have had. Um, we have been quite good in selling the concept and uh, understanding our market. Denmark is a very small country. Yeah, and so this is a this is a perfect time to mention. I know Trevor, we were saying that our partners come from all walks of life, all places, all backgrounds. <laughs> Thank you, Lars, for being that proof because we do have a historic relationship with you. So this is the the prime example. And I still believe that one of the reasons also is the fact that I talk German, because when I when I called Murphy the first time, I actually got to talk to Marco. And ah. ten, minutes, ten minutes into the talk in English, I said to the Marcus, are you German? And yes, of course. And then uh, we spoke German, and 14 days later, I signed the contract. So it was fate. <laughs> it, was, it was a match made in ha ha heaven. Yeah, I, I think really this is this is one of the reasons. So, but we then, then, then continued quite fast. with uh, we, we actually spent two years in Denmark uh, only selling because it's, um, it's a small country with a heavily dominated market by very few advisors. Yeah, and they keep their market. So uh, we had to find another way. No advisors, no architect. And uh, after three years, we were lucky to get the European Championship uh, to Denmark, and um, even more lucky to have um, all the pools from Malta. And not being to, uh, beg your pardon. I, I was sorry. I was interrupting. I was just uh, going to say that uh, we had the we hosted the pool for the um, European Championships in Denmark in 2013 and I'm sure this this did a lot to help publicize Merthe in the area. And we actually sold the pools afterwards to uh, the municipal so it, it's still our biggest facility in Denmark it's, uh, it's a 50 meter uh, outside 25 meter and two times uh, hot water pools indoors. I mean everything in Denmark is normally indoor uh, even though we have uh, the Gulf current running around Denmark or near to Denmark, uh, it's still a cold place uh, to be. So most of it is indoor. But then we actually went from just selling pools to um, suddenly being a main contractor for the first time ever in my life. I don't come from contracting, but uh, the next pool we built, which is the, the one in Tastrup, um, was actually uh, at the main contractor. Uh, the pool today is it's actually the main place for the Danish national team, so this is also a good PR for us. Ah, excellent. Um, 
the name also actually is a provocation. Uh, dish comes from directly translated Danish sport swim arenas. And we, we use the name for provocation again, nearly every swimming pool at that time being called as a uh, yeah, fun facility. Uh, we uh, were losing more and more um, swimming pools for, for sport. And so this, this was also a provocation that uh, I wanted to have more sport facilities uh, for swimming. And uh, we've actually had a great success. I mean, it, it, it's maybe too big. We, we have currently 60% of the market the last six years. Oh, wow. Um, Congratulations. So, yeah, thank you. Yeah. But also, of course, also being a market leader, it actually puts us under pressure with, uh, in, in particular, the advisors. We fight the advisors quite a lot. Um, and these these five, six people, they, of course, fight for the business because having Murtha in the background, uh, everything constructed, everything in Revit, everything in BIM, uh, we surpass these people uh, by, by a, a mileage. I mean, they are... They are still not very good at, at, at using the new technology, and in that sense, Murtha is uh, first class. Uh, this is uh, very good for us in a market where uh, the official bodies all ask for um, 3D uh, delivery of everything and um, um, a, a very, very heavy push towards uh, digitalization. I so, and Murtha is very important for us. Impressed, Lars, by uh, the way that you picked up very quickly all the uh, all the good points about working with Murtha and also the good points about designing pools. So, so many of your pools have all the latest uh, technology attached to them, and uh, I'm, I'm sure that's a lot to do with uh, the way you do the research beforehand into what's best for the client. In, it, in this particular situation. You're right. I mean, but also I think part of our success is also the fact that we, we ended up being a supplier of all the bad stuff in the swimming arena. So today we actually not offer our customers, but offer the main contractors, the main builders in the market. We offer a partnership of taking all the bad stuff away from them. Ah. We, we supply the water treatment, the pool, the ventilation in the swimming arena, everything which has to do with uh, an area which normally does make a lot of fun for the main contractor. Yes, and this makes a great difference to the client. If the air's, air quality is good, if the water quality is good, then everyone enjoys the facility. If one of those is not on par, then exactly. it hurts the most. It's always connected in a, in a swimming arena, an indoor swimming arena. It's interconnected, and especially, I think, the environment also. So this has been very successful for us. And actually we have today, we have main contractors who actually don't, don't go into tenders with uh, concrete pools. They don't do it. They simply say, we, we will only make pools with Murtha, which, which has been a very strong um, result for us and uh, even makes it more, more strong for us. So we, have, we have just had an analysis of different pools and uh, four of the pools were the only pools actually built on time at the budget and uh, all four pools with our, pool, with our Murtha pools. And we are just working now, Lars, you probably know that uh, we're working on a, uh, a design to extract the chloramines from the surface of the water uh, through the recirculation system. And that should be very exciting when that comes to the market. Yeah. And, uh, really we were also very excited about all the new developments we saw earlier this week, uh, Lani, with uh, yeah. with your presentation. And uh, you know, the endless pool, for example, is also something we have been selling for two years now. So it's uh, it's very nice to see Murtha uh, also entering into that one. It's a strong it's a strong tool, a strong selling point. And we do actually also put a bit of effort into uh, finding solutions to measure. Um, air quality and, uh, and using this to, to improve uh, the whole system. Uh, so it, it's an interesting area. And I think this, this way of entering the market needs to, uh, it gives a value proposition, which yeah. is hard to beat. If you're only a pipe builder or uh, an installer, uh, you are relying on the, on the main contractor. And uh, this, this can be very hard. So uh, it, it's good to have a, a value proposition, which is uh, 
difficult to to avoid. Yeah, uh, I think you sum up uh, the the session really well in that uh, if we find a good partner who really wants to work with us to improve the product, improve the way we do things, and share with us their their uh, knowledge and expertise in these different areas, everyone wins. Exactly. And, yeah. So that's that's really what we're talking about. That's what we're looking for: partners who are interested in really uh, moving this whole thing forward. Well and done. From any background, like we saw today, uh, all walks of life, and no matter your background. So, Lawrence, thank you very much for joining us today. It was a Bye. pleasure to have you. And I actually I want to end the presentation with a very interesting photo because this is Lars. <laughs> Uh, uh, International Business Director Marcus Rutger. What, the funny part about this is that Lars is actually building this helicopter himself. So, uh, yeah. extraordinary. I worry. I worry. <laughs> <laughs> no. as, long as, as long as Marcus is the first one going in from the company, <laughs> no problem. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you for today, Trevor. Thank you, Lani. I thought that I was uh, very interested in some of those um, comments. Uh, yeah. They actually helped us through the presentation by bringing forward uh, ideas yeah. and comments that we would normally have missed. And I know we got only four people we were able to host today, you know, because of time constraints and everything, the time differences. But I know I mentioned our subsidiaries before, even our small branch offices. And I'm sorry if I'm forgetting any names off the top of my head, but we really are, we are really proud of everyone uh, around the world, the subsidiaries, the branch offices, this individual teams, you know, our, our partners in general. Um, yeah. Actually, we're not much without them, so. No, I should mention, Lani, now you've said it, if anybody's still listening, we, you know, when we say in the beginning, we've not had success with, uh, let's say, filtration companies, right? Bar and Ray in Scotland have been fantastic for us, right? Yeah. Uh, these guilds, the, the master pools in Alberta, fantastic for us, you know. Yeah. Other the small builders like the Jacobs out in uh, New Zealand. New Zealand yeah. Hundreds of pools, right? Yeah. We've got lots of really good partners out there. We just didn't have time to include everybody in the session. Yeah. Okay, so thank you, Trevor. <laughs> thank you, Lonnie. We'll have the next session in the new year with more exciting topics, I'm sure. And we wish everyone a Merry Christmas. That we do. Thank you, Trevor. Bye. Bye.